Warning, the Gel Blaster toy shown in this video could be mistaken for a real firearm. Do not take Gel Blasters into public spaces or it will likely be treated as real by authorities. Gel Blasters are classified as toys in Queensland regulations, however this may be different in your state or territory. Be sure to check your local laws before buying or ordering a Gel Blaster. Also, ensure you use adequate eye protection whenever using Gel Blasters. Stay safe everyone. So good afternoon uh, boys and girls. So today I've got another Jubble Blaster review video for you. Uh, we'll get into that in just a moment, just a quick couple of points. Uh, again, on the lighting, I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. I do have some lighting on the way, but until it actually gets here, I can set it up. Uh, there's not a lot I can do about it. I hopefully will have that before the next video gets shot. So hopefully it'll be here within the week. Uh, other than that, there is some fairly big news that have been coming out recently on some of the new blasters coming up, such as the P90, which I'm definitely hoping to get my hands on when that gets here. Uh, also the new MP7, which uh, if you have a look at this, you could probably tell that I am a fan of it, and I will definitely be getting the new one to utilize for a special project, which if you've seen any of my older skirmish videos, you'll probably know exactly what I'm gonna do there. So we've got a few coming up, as well as the new AKs, which we've been seeing some videos out of China looking very nice. I'm definitely hoping to do a cool AK build as well as something a little bit special, but that's further down the line. The other thing is as well, uh, I have been trying and hoping to do a video on my special M4, one I bought uh, through Australian Blaster Tactical with a special uh, Hera style stock and foregroup and a few other little bits. But at the moment, I've just had a component fail in it, the piston. So I'm just uh, trying to get that fixed so I can actually get some more footage of that because I love playing with it. I also, in that, utilise this wonderful little box mag which I sourced through Beast Pro. So, a bit more to come. Over time, I'll get there as soon as I can. I'm watching so I can do this best as, can, as much as I can do. So, the other thing as well is in pulling apart the gearbox, I am starting to learn a bit more about how they work and into upgrades, that sort of thing. I have seen one or two comments about uh, if you could post a video on how to pull apart a Gen 8 gearbox, uh, how to do certain upgrades, that sort of thing. I will do my best once I am confident that I know enough about it to actually put it in video form properly, I will definitely do that, look at doing that and put that up so then everyone can see how to do it, especially as the newer ones start coming in, which use different styles. The older ones are probably gonna get a bit cheaper, therefore those who are on a tighter budget can still afford something quite nice and have a bit of play around and make some crazy creations. So moving on from all that, the Jubble Blaster rifle that we're gonna to review today is the JM Gen 9 M4A1 Jubble Blaster Rifle. First, we'll get in straight into the review without any delay, and we'll go straight into section one or the close-up look. Now, before we look really close up, you'll see that this is in the style of an M4 uh, carbine or carbine, depending on what part of the planet you're on and how you pronounce it, in that it's got this solid handguard here, although it does have some fluting, and it is a slightly taller design than what you'd probably see in other uh, publications, videos, movies, games, whatever. Other than that, it does look fairly much like a stock M4A1 design with a few little touches here and there. Something else to note too before we get too close up is the entire body is not made of the nylon material that we've started seeing such as your M4SS uh, and also the Chris Vector V2 that I did last which is a nice uh, upgrade especially in body strength and noise. It doesn't make as much noise when you grip it like some plastics do. So it could be AK-47 V2 and other things like that. Now that makes it a bit more rigid and pliable. So that's a nice touch. Moving along, we'll go to the business end. Now, on the front of this blaster, as you'll see just here, it does have quite a long outer barrel. We'll get that a bit closer, there it is. And the inner barrel, as you can just see there, is plastic. Now, come on, focus, focus, there we go. So yeah, now it does have a thread on the end there as well. It does come with a flash holder that threads on. Uh, 
I, once again, I borrowed this blaster off a friend of mine who managed to get it early so I could do this video. He's removed the flash hider because he runs a hop up on the inner barrel, just here, and I didn't grab the flash hider off him. So it does come with a small birdcage style flash hider. Uh, more on the hop up later. Moving along the rest of the outer barrel, you get to the front A style front iron sight, typical of your AR and uh, M16 designs. Moving further along, you do have this full nylon handguard. Now it is split seamed along the middle here. It's a bit hard to tell, just the mold lines of the actual uh, guard, but it is fairly firm and solid to grab. You can even squeeze it and it's not gonna flex. So it does give you a fairly good grip and it is easy to grip onto no matter how you wanna grab it. Something to note is up the top, you can see those holes. Let's see if I can put it like that. Yep, just there. And then along the bottom as well, you've got them just along there. If you look in there, you can actually see that along the top there is a stainless steel bar that runs in there. It's a bit hard to show. I'll see if I can get the camera to focus. Yeah, there you go. You can just see it in there. Now that adds a bit more strength in it from what I can see. It doesn't seem to do too much else. Nice benefit. That means if you do drop it, it's less likely to snap or bend the inner barrel. That's nice. Now on the other side, it does appear to have a somewhat stainless steel outer barrel in this section here. Once again, nice addition, especially if you did want to cut this down, means you do have a strong uh, outer barrel protecting it up to about this point. So you could even cut this down and make it quite uh, stubby, which personally I would probably do for a bit of fun. Moving further along, there's a, your normal cu uh, coupling just on there, so you can remove that if you wish. So next, we'll move on to the receiver and the main body of the blaster itself. Now, up the top here, you do see your standard AR style carry handle. So as you can tell, it is designed in the same pattern as all the others. Nice little carry arm. It does also have a peep sight in the back that you can just see there. That pops up and down to give you a wide eye or not. And obviously that works with the front iron sights as well, just to help guide your shot down range, like you can see just there. So I'll try and show you that peep sight again. A little bit better and yeah that's probably about the best we're gonna get so that's cool so again it's fairly pointless but a nice little touch nonetheless now something interesting on this one the Wells M401 had a similar style handle with adjustment dials such as this one and this one for windage and elevation now on the Wells they didn't really do much on this one funnily enough they actually do if you turn this in a clockwise fashion it will raise the iron sights, as you can see there, it's actually now raised slightly. And same, counterclockwise goes down. And on this style on the outside here, that will adjust your back peep sight left or right, which you can use to adjust for windage. Like on the wells, absolutely pointless on a gel ball blaster, as these things are nowhere near accurate enough or have enough ballistic energy to actually be capable of really worrying about those things. And the wind affects the gels to a point where this is not gonna be enough adjustment. So yeah, nice little touches, not really practical. Now, funnily enough about the handguard, you do have a couple of little uh, nylon form bolts just on the left hand side, just here. And if you loosen them, what you can do is remove the entire handguard. And now you have a top rail of a top Picatinny rail there. So you could remove that handguard and put in a reflex or a little ACOG scope or another kind of sight, torches, cameras, whatever you want to do. Obviously, you do need to be mindful of the fact that you still have the front A pillar style iron sight just there. So, yeah. That's a nice little addition, gives you a bit of flexibility on how you would like to do it. And then you can just put it back on as you would like. Tighten the little screws on the left hand side of the body like I'm doing now. And you're good to go. Absolutely fine. Nice little adjustment, definitely. So you also have a charging handle just at the back here. Same as anything, ambidextrous, two fingers to the side. There's a little clip there and goes like so. Now this one, the little dust cover isn't popping open as easy as most of them should but it should open that dust cover at the same time as well. More on that later. So moving further along, like I said, the entire body of the receiver is made of nylon, like the rest of the blaster, is in a top section, which goes along here, and you remove the pin just here on the edge, and this one on the back here, and you should be able to tilt that whole thing up to expose parts of the gearbox. Now the other side is you've got the fire select. Now on the right hand side, as you can see just there, there is nothing, it's just a little uh, dial. So the file select is only on one side, it's on the left hand side, near where a right handed person would hold their thumb like so. Now of course, as per most of them, it does have safe, semi, and automatic fire. A semi-automatic fire on this does work quite well apparently, but we'll get to that towards the end. Moving further down, you do have your trigger. Now the trigger is plastic like uh, most of them. So 
A typical uh, issue with Jimming M4A1s is the trigger breaking. It's probably more because of the force that people are exerting on them and they're only small cheap plastic. So maybe an idea to upgrade that to a metal trigger later on if you do run uh, into it starting to stretch or bend because odds are you are gonna break it. But it does seem to be fine for the time being. You do have your mag release button just here in this bright orange, just there on the right hand side. And on the left you can see the actual latch is that orange section there. So when you push it, that raises to allow the magazine out. Then you move on to the actual pistol grip. Now the pistol grip is textured. On the back it's sort of vertically serrated and on the sides it's just got the spiky texturing. It does have that single nub there for your middle finger to go through like so. It is fairly comfortable and it is slightly different angle and distance backwards than your Gen 8 M4A1s. It's only minor but it, there is a slight difference there so just something to be aware of. So moving further along the blaster, we'll move to the last piece, which is the buttstock. Now, the buttstock is adjustable. You just leave this lever here and you can go up to three points of adjustment, front, middle, or back, not a problem. Now, the battery in this blaster is contained within the buffer tube, as is the case of most M4 style blasters. We'll get to that in the basic operations. Now you can remove this if you wish. Now it does take a bit of effort, so you have to move it all the way back. It is very similar to the uh, Wells style stock in how you get it off and that is that you'll have to actually physically lift this entire pin with your hand it has quite a bit of tension and then pull it out and then you're left with your normal buffer tube obviously like I said the battery goes in there now your these will come with the standard black gel gum connector uh, like I said we are starting to run with a different style of connectors because the battery reuse and these connectors handle voltage better so Yours will not come with a little yellow XT60, they will come with the black gel blaster connection. So don't need to worry about that. Same thing to get it back on, pull that down, slot it back on, and you're all good to go. So overall, the Gen 9 Jinming M4A1 does look quite nice. It's different in that it has the carving style handguard up the front. It does follow through with the wells in the carry handle and how it has that all laid out, as opposed to the previous one, uh, which was just a monolithic rail on the top. And not only that, but it definitely feels a lot stronger than the Gen 8s because it's not just plastic and it doesn't feel like it's gonna break. Uh, a bit unfortunate they didn't include an alloy barrel in it, but I'm sure that later on down the line they'll probably do that or enough people will start doing that modification themselves anyway, where they figure out the easiest way to do it. So not too big a deal. Um, yeah, it does look nice. Now, with that being said, we'll quickly jump into section two and I'll show you how to do the basic operations of this blaster. So first things first, I left the buttstock, the buttstock off the buff tube. The reason is I want to show you how to do the battery connection. So there are two real ways of which you could do it. So one is obviously you take the entire buttstock off, put your battery in there, jam it in, and then put this back over the top. The other way is there is actually a panel just there. You can't really see it there. It's hard to get out. There is actually a small panel there, which is about the same shape of this, as the back of the buff tube, which you can pull off and that way you could take the battery out in connection and do everything that way. You would have to have the buttstock all the way in to do it, take five seconds, but something to be aware of. Uh, I found this to be a real pain to get out. So I normally use a screwdriver to try and pry it out, but obviously you only want to do so much because you might accidentally break it or damage it. It's up to you how much you care about it. I would probably just take the buttstock off every time because the batteries I use don't tend to run out of charge very quickly. So that's just the way I run things. Obviously your mileage may vary, especially if you're only using the really small, really, really honest Chinese labeled batteries. Hmm. So, in order to do the battery, like I said, I'm using the larger Turnigy style batteries with a different connection. So I simply connect up here as per usual with every one of them, push that in battery first, as far as you can go, and then just put the wiring in as such. Now, so putting the buff tube back on, like I said, uh, when I took it off, it is very simple. It's just a reversal of the same method. Keep in mind, we do use larger wiring and a uh, thicker connector style just here. So you do have to feed those in like so, and then you'll have to lift up this pin again. You may need both hands to get it properly without forcing it, but it is just a little bit tight. It is tight, but it should slip right in. Giggity. Other than that, it's now in, so we're now Powered and ready to go. Perfect. And the dust cover opens. Awesome. 
So this blaster is now fully charged with a battery connected and ready to fire. Obviously, the next thing we're gonna need is some gels. Otherwise, it's not gonna shoot anything. And that's where we move on to the magazine. Now, like most of your M4A1 and I suppose most gel blasters at the moment, this is an automatically fed magazine. So if you look at the top of the magazine there, you can just see a couple of electronic connectors there to drive the motor inside this. So like with any auto fed magazine, don't go tipping a heap of water in with your gels because it's just gonna destroy that motor and then your magazine's gonna be no good and no one wants that. Now the other side is you do have this little raised section here. So that does mean that it's not gonna necessarily fit in other blasters. Now, the friend who had this, he did try sticking the old Gen 8 style magazines in it and also a couple other things, but apparently they're not the same size. Now, the friend of mine who lent me this blaster to do this video, he did uh, test to try and fit other magazines into it, especially from Gen 8s, because he has had previous Gen 8s and M4SS and whatnot. Now, they don't actually fit, they're not the same size. So this here is a M4A1 magazine that fits inside a Gen 8. This is the one from my M4, which I'm currently in the middle of repairing. And if you put them side by side, you'll notice just there, this one, which is the Gen 8 style magazine, is actually taller long ways and doesn't actually fit. In fact, I did try putting this in the mag well. It goes in initially to there and then it jams up. So he has modified a couple of his to work, but it ended up taking, he had to shave a bunch of plastic off the back down to where it locks into the mag well. Not ideal. Uh, it's a little bit annoying that they didn't make these compatible because that would mean people wouldn't have to go and get a whole heap more magazines now. It also means the drum mags that people are using would still work. Now, obviously I can't save much on the drum mags because they are a different style, but they probably don't work. Of course, this is like what most companies do and they do this so that you have to now buy a heap more magazines. Just sells you more equipment, basically. Annoying, but still there. Keep in mind with this magazine, the new Gen 9 one, it is a nylon as well quite good, feels quite solid. So on this magazine, you just have a little door on the back here, has a little latch, you just pull that down and you can feed your gels inside. Now I have pre-fed this with some gels and so that's fully loaded already. Simply put, the mag well is actually flared on this one down the bottom, there is a flaring there. So it does make it quite nice to help guide it in. Now something on this, getting the magazine in is actually a little bit stiffer than on previous M4s. You have to give it a bit more force. So obviously it's not all the way in, so give it a nice little hit like on most M4 styles, make sure it's in there and you're good to go. To release the magazine, press the little mag release orange button there, it'll lift the latch on the other side and the whole magazine will come out freely. Like so, pretty simple. So now we're fully loaded and the gun is charged. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear that the charging handle will actually prime the magazine. A little bit annoying, but oh well, could have been worse. And that's how you do your basic operations. So moving on from that, We've had a look at how to, basic, uh, how to basically run this blaster, if you've got it for the first time, and we've had a look over the blaster close up. So, you know what the next section is? Let's do the chrono test. Of course, don't forget whenever you're using gel blasters, always have your eye for a while. So we seem to be having a bit of inconsistency at the start. I think it was just some of the gels feed, not feeding in properly, but we now seem to be averaging around 220, which is fairly good uh, for, again, standard blaster. Nothing's been done to this gearbox. Uh, the battery we're using is the larger Turner G Airsoft battery. It's uh, uh, one 1200 milliamp hour. It's also 11.1 volts, so that's why you can hear the higher rate of fire. Shouldn't impact the rate, uh, feet per second speed of the gels, but Still, that's fairly consistent, fairly good. We are occasionally dropping down a little bit, but that could just be the gels I'm using. I'm using my normal slight mixture of uh, hardened oranges with a few milkies thrown in there, here and there, for a bit of fun. But yeah, seems to be pretty good. So this is full auto. Now we'll give it a try in semi-automatic, just for argument's sake. Yeah, so semi-automatic we seem to be getting a consistent 215 to 218 feet per second. 
pretty good. Uh, would explain because on the full auto, we get to wind up at least half a second, making them maybe a little bit faster. Unsure, but that's all right. I'll refill this magazine. We'll do a round per second rate of fire test. Sorry about that. Halfway through reloading, my girlfriend decided to get home and open the door on me. So that was fun. Anyway, we'll do a rate of fire test. Let's see what she can do. at all. It seems to, be, it seems, it sounds to be firing and cycling quite fast, so yeah, a bit strange. 58 rounds per second though, that seems like a lot, so not sure I had a feel on that one to be honest. It's definitely firing very fast if you ever do get a drum mag for this, which is almost recommended at that sort of fire rate. Um, yeah, you're probably going to be going through them like normal people go through normal magazines, but that's okay. So we'll now head out in the wonderful Queensland summer sun, we'll do some accuracy testing, see what we can do. So I've just uh, brought up the 15 metre target here and slowed it right down to half speed. As you can see, it is actually fairly accurate, uh, even though it's a plastic barrel and a few other things without a hop up, it's not too bad. And not only that, but even at the 20 metre range, I didn't actually have to elevate the gun up so much to actually get it to hit on target, even though it was you know, accuracy was sporadic at that point. So all in all, it's fairly accurate for a standard blaster that would definitely benefit from a hop up. And I highly recommend that if you're going to go around, go around in full auto and sort of burst three to four shots at a time to maintain accuracy. So once again, we're going to do a mag empty test. So I've got the mag full, uh, refilled with obviously mostly oranges, but a few milkies thrown in there, all hardened. Uh, keep in mind again, 11 volt SL battery, so it's going to fire a little faster than your normal gel gun batteries, but should still be a good indicator. If uh, the current tests are anything to go by, it's probably not going to take long to empty this magazine. So just a quick one for you guys, I just finished the mag empty test, came back inside. Now, I did notice something, you probably saw it at the start of the firing, that it didn't always fire initially, it actually pulled the trigger and then stopped. Now what I think it actually happened was, if you have a look here, the magazine has a bit of front and back play on it, and because of course your contacts are on the back, if it's bent like that, like it does when it's fully in, it may just be that it's um, not actually hitting the contacts properly when it's doing like that. So I think that's what was doing it, it was interrupting the circuit and so it would stop firing. I did just pull it back a little and it seemed to be fine. Obviously very annoying and probably a trap that people are gonna fall into thinking there might be something wrong with their blaster or the magazine. Um, I'm not sure how you could fix it. You could try making it put something in here so it jams the magazine slightly that way. It does make it annoying though. Um, probably an easier fix would be putting something on these contacts to artificially elevate them so then no matter what it's going to be on contact but yep just something you guys need to be aware of 
So that circuit cut issue is really a pain in the ass, especially considering this is a brand new gel blaster. You'd expect it to be pretty well good. I'm hoping that it's just this blaster that has that issue. If yours has that issue, let me know because that seems to be a pretty big flaw and hopefully they can do something about that. So yeah, and as you would have seen, it doesn't take long to empty this magazine and the accuracy, you sort of got to maintain burst fire mode by yourself in order to make it accurate. So I highly recommend that you exercise some caution with your trigger finger. Make sure you're only firing three to four gels at a time to maintain fire. Uh, don't attempt to do full on suppression fire with this. It just doesn't have the ammo capacity. And if you're uh, in a game against someone who has one of these, yeah, that ammo doesn't last long. So there's something to uh, take to the bank and probably help you out a bit. And uh, yeah, so that concludes the accuracy, chrono and mag testing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into some gameplay footage. So something a bit special for this one is the gameplay footage is actually from a new field in central Queensland that's uh, getting ready to open up out at Calliope. Now, it's not open for business yet. They haven't uh, opened up to the public and started doing proper games yet. But at this point, it was just a bit of a tester to get a lay of the land. And uh, yeah, and hopefully you guys enjoy it. And you'll definitely be seeing more of this field in the future. On the right! Far right! Yep! Oh, that far left? Yep, far, far, far. I'll go concrete wall. Yep. Corner. We are ready! Alright, well I'll go centre. Centre right. I can't eat. Hey, John. Hit! Hey Adrian. We'll rush him. What side? Center. Oh, no. There's a bathtub there we could use to get into that window. Let's if you can get up and try and pin him, I'll try and bolt in. Where? Center middle window. Okay, cool. Hey John. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Hey Aaron. Aaron, the bounce off your hat. I just watched three of them bounce off. <laughs> Uh oh, I'm out. Aaron's still there, I'm out of ammo. Hey Dan. I'll go this way, I'll rush around the right, draw him out, you get him. Keep him pinned. Damn it! <laughs> I'm out of ammo! I was going to run around and distract him. <laughs> Out here. It's like a mill. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh 
fucking dead. <laughs> I got no ammo. Give me your. Swap them back. <laughs> Two lives. You ran into it. Ah, Joss. Aaron's there. Now. <laughs> that hit you. <laughs> Aaron's respawning. Oh shit, man. <laughs> It was on the ground. <laughs> That's my foot. You got me. Got you. Katie, it's on your chin. Yeah, got you. Dan, you failed! <laughs> Why didn't you call him out? Tim's there behind the hoop. Moving up. Woo. Gotcha, Timmy. Oh, shit. Hit. I'm out. So I hope you guys enjoyed that gameplay footage. Uh, as you would have seen, there are a couple of pieces there, uh, sections where the misfire, I think due to the circuit break with the magazine moving, um, it absolutely annoyed the hell out of me and it just came up in the weirdest times, including when I was running around the wall there and there were two guys. If it had kept firing, I would have got both of them, no worries, because it misfired, I only got one of them and yeah, I'm actually lucky that I even got him. So that is definitely something to be aware of and keep an eye on. I'm hoping, like I said, that it is only this one, but I don't know. It seems to be the design of the magazine and uh, Magwell. So we'll see how that pans out, but 
you know, fires beware, obviously. So with that being said, we'll quickly jump into section five and the final thoughts. So my final thoughts are the solid is quite, uh, the solid, ha, <laughs> yep, I can English well today. The blaster is quite solid, that all nylon body, it's quite stiff, it's quite reinfor well reinforced, especially at the barrel area with those stain, uh, with those metal bars, and a few other points like that. Um, it only has a plastic barrel, which isn't too big of a deal. Uh, however, I reckon an alloy barrel upgrade and maybe one or two other little minor things inside, and you'll probably get this thing competing fairly well with the Wells M4. It is down on feet per second output and energy output compared to the Wells M uh, M1 F M401, sorry. Uh, but it's not too bad a deal and it can be worked around and I imagine that uh, with the way things are going Odds are there's going to be some upgrades and uh, parts out there Which will be able to improve that if you wanted to go that route all in all though It is quite capable for its standard uh, in its standard form now obviously I had issues with the mag feed and the other major issue I reckon is just the mag capacity now. Yeah, I was running an 11 volt battery, but that's not a lot of time to fire between magazines, which is really going to hurt down the line. And the fact that you can't use your old magazines, to me, is a massive minus because that would have been an absolutely perfect system if they did. It's just simple crossover. All your drum mags, everything would just work. But yeah, that one's going to take a bit more thought and I'm not a particularly happy, a good fan of that decision. But anyway... As for recommended accessories, I would highly recommend at least three extra magazines because, yeah, that ammo, yeah, that, that ammo capacity is just almost a joke. Um, a hop-up definitely would help you get further distance on your shots, and because you're not firing at stupidly high FPS, it should actually fly relatively straight. I, like I said, the one, this one I borrowed it from mate. He had a hop-up originally when he handed it to me. I test-fired it with a hop-up on there, and it seemed to fly fairly accurately. Doesn't necessarily need an alloy barrel, so you don't need to consider that once something I would recommend. It would be cool to see done, definitely, and would help in some cases, but it's not too bad. So yeah, that's about it for the JM Gen 9 M4A1. All in all, pretty good, but a couple of missed spots, definitely. Um, I'm not going to rush out to get one, but that's just my opinion. Obviously, your opinion may be different. So that's it for this review, I'm hoping to get on to some other videos for you, especially I would like to do a couple more gameplay videos, especially out at the Calliope field, give you a bit of a look at that one, another potential field in CQ that's opening up and a bit more involved, also just get back to some basic and have a bit of fun rather than going through so much in-depth information. Other than that, let me know your thoughts below in the comments, if you like the video, feel free to give it a like, give it a subscribe, if you didn't like it, give it a dislike and let me know in the comments what you reckon I need to improve on. My lights actually just turned up today, so <laughs> just in the nick of time. So the next videos hopefully should be a lot better. Moving on from that, feel free to jump on the Facebook page. Also, we just went over 300 subscribers on the YouTube channel. I have noticed. Thank you so much for that. Uh, if I get off my ass, then I might do some sort of competition for hitting 500 subs, assuming that that's going to happen soon. Absolutely love the support you guys are giving me, and I'll see you out on the field. Catch you later. But he said